G'day guys, this is my review of the Tolhurst Harley Ingleby HIHP model by uh, collaboration with uh, Thunderbolt and Tolhurst Surfboards. So let's get into it. This surfboard I've had for uh, probably a couple of years now. Uh, bought it in late uh, 2017, it's now 2019. And um, I thought I'd just do a little review. Review. I mean, I'm not a, uh, a shaper or a store owner or a professional surfer. I'm just a, I guess you'd say, like an amateur, sort of everyday sort of surfer. Um, do do a few comps and state titles and things like that, but generally just an everyday bread and butter surfer. Um, uh, the waves that I live in are sort of around the South Australian south coast, so it's sort of like fat sort of fat sort of waves, beach breaky sort of waves, there is a sort of pseudo point, so it's sort of, um, and I have surfed this in pretty good waves as well, and at the same time I've surfed it some pretty crap waves. So let's get stuck into it. The reason, um, the reason I went for one of these boards is, is pretty much the technology and the construction plus the design. Um, I've always been on uh, polyurethane boards with uh, traditional glassing. Um, I do like the high performance style short boards. Um, I also do have a few nose rider boards and a couple of logs in, in my day. Um, I used to, I had had a couple of tough light boards as well and um, they were a bit of a craze in the early 2000s sort of thing and the fact that they were so called indestructible and they were a little bit lighter than your, your average uh, standard poly style board um, really drew me to them. Um, I did find though, like with the uh, EPS core and the, the shell construction that the old uh, tough lights used to have, they were really chattery and bouncy and corky. Um, they sort of lacked a little bit of drive, they lacked a lot of flex. Um, they sort of used to bob a lot and I used to sort of play around with uh, different types of uh, thicknesses that I would normally not ride in a poly board because of, um, to compensate for the float the extra float they had. Um, I used to find they used to get really affected in the wind and chop, like they, unless it was like perfect sheet glass, you know, the tough lights sort of struggled. So, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people might have loved the top lights. I generally had traditional fiberglass boards and tough lights because of the way that the tough lights rode. So anyway, um, after having a couple of tough light boards, I ended up going back to the, um, the normal poly glass uh, long boards, um, particularly for comps and that as well. And um, it wasn't a, a couple of years ago, I was up on the Gold Coast and I went out into the Golden Breed store at Cool and Gatter there. And I actually hired the cruiser model of the Harley Ingleby board. Now, I think that those ones are a, an epoxy construction, possibly, with the uh, PVC, a little bit of carbon, carbon in the stringer. They do have an EPS core but I don't think that they're a full, on a full epoxy board. I wasn't too sure because they appear like they're epoxy and um, I was sort of hesitant, but being a higher board and I was only up there with short boards, um, I thought why not, I might as well hire this thing, it was only like 40 bucks a day or something and it was perfect sort of green mount, you know, like two to three foot runners running down the point, pretty much male waves only. Um, I was struggling on my short board and I had a little Al Merrick biscuit, so um, yeah, I thought why not hire a log while I'm up there. And um, I'll tell you what, like this, this Harley Ingleby Cruiser that was up there absolutely ripped. Like it, um, it didn't do the things that normal epoxy tough light boards do, whereas it paddled really well, it had heaps of drive, it carried its speed through dead sections where I used to find like the old epoxy tough light boards used to sort of slow down really quickly because they didn't sort of, they lacked that momentum from the heavier weight. And um, when cross-stepping and nose riding, um, if, if a section sort of spills onto the deck, I used to find the old tough lights used to get knocked off track really easily. Whereas um, this thing just stuck to the track, didn't get upset by turbulence or white water, trimmed really well, and also when you step on the tail, you could throw a good turn. I was blown away by how good these boards were and um, I ended up hiring this thing, I kept it for the rest of the, uh, the 10 days that we were there 
and pretty much surfed that the whole time. And it surfed in really good three to four, four to five foot snapper green mount. Um, and uh, yeah, it was brilliant. And then, so when I got back, um, I'd actually creased, I had a high performance, uh, high performance rounded square, quite a pulled in narrow uh, long board that was a fiberglass board and I had actually creased it. So I bit the bullet, did a little bit of research and then found this, the carbon, the carbon top this Harling would be HIHP. The reason I went for the carbon is, uh, is basically the construction. They have, it's a EPS core. It is an EPS core, which is a lot of the modern boards like the Firewire and uh, lead boards are going for the EPS core now. Um, this has got extra carbon than the normal HIHP. It's got more carbon wrapped through it. I think they use carbon P PVC strips in the stringers as well. And um, basically, because these boards do cost a pretty penny, around about 1800 bucks new off the shelf, I want a board that's going to last a minimum 10 years. You know, as long as I don't snap the thing. And um, whereas most fiberglass boards, you get three, four years out of them, and they start to get a lot of pressure dings, little splits in the rail, start to let a little bit of water in, you can crease them. The board I had before had, was only two years old and I creased it already. Um, just through duck diving on solid swell and just rios into flats and things like that. You know, probably not the best thing to do on the mount. So, and then this little baby, the first thing that you notice when you pick these things up under your arm is how freaking light they are. This thing, I don't know what it would weigh, but this weighs about half the weight of a normal fiberglass longboard. This one is 9 1, 21 and 7 8 by 2 and 13 16, so it's about a 40, it's a 61.4 litres, but this thing is so light, it's probably as light as a tough light, and, um, but this is nowhere near a tough light. These things are unbelievable. So the first first time I got on one, when I got it home, it's uh, it, my first impression was this thing is Formula One. It is unbelievable. It's fast. It paddles unreal. Um, it's unbelievably loose, and you can absolutely chuck this thing around like a shortboard. So I do ride shortboards as well as longboards. But this thing is unbelievable. So it's got a really nice refined, that really nice refined round. This is the round tail model. You can get a square tail as well. And um, it's got a pretty much, a, uh, I don't know if you can see that, it's got a pretty much like a continuous rocker through it. So it's not like a three stage rocker. I think that the, the contour is a three stage, but the rocker itself is a continuous rocker. And I really like that. I do have a Slater board, one of those cymatics, and that's got a continuous rocker, and it's unreal. You can pretty much turn this board from anywhere on the tail. You know what I mean? Like you, so you can have your feet planted over the tail pad, super loose, unbelievably direct. Um, you can whip cut backs on this thing like, you, like never before. Uh, but you can have your back foot sort of further up in front of the fins sort of thing, like for a quick directional change, you can turn it from there as well because of the rocker. Not only that, it does have a fair bit of nose rocker in it, but enough flat in it that you can still nose ride it pretty good. So this thing can take steep drops. Um, I reckon you can travel with this board, take it to Indo, um, surf it in solid swell as well, and um, providing that you look after it as far as duck diving, don't, you know, sue, things like that go. This thing, this thing is bulletproof. So, um, I run it with the, uh, the standard Harley Ingleby fins in there that they come with. You can get two different sizes. So this is the standard fins that I bought that come with it. Um, you can get um, a 5.5 center fin, which is, I think it's like the Harley XL, XL large fins as well. Um, I have I have surfed it with it. I do actually have one of the bigger fins as well. Didn't quite like it as much. I think I prefer the slightly smaller, slightly smaller fin um, in the center as well. Um, I haven't tried it as a quad yet, but um, yeah. So I think these things have got a um, like a, a relatively flat. It's almost like it's got a bit of convex in the center. Like there's a bit of a spiral V that starts about about here in the board, I don't know if you can see that the reflection runs down through the board so the thing goes rah rah like super quick 
does it, it has a bit of concave in the nose, but it feels like it's relatively relatively flat, flat through the nose there. Swing that past the camera. Yeah, relatively flattish through the nose, but it does nose ride really well. It does have quite a narrow nose as well, which is um, which is a really good thing because it's got a really nice balanced swing weight. So you, so when you're sort of coming up off, off the top, or if you're doing re-entries or cutties and stuff, you don't have that big bulky sort of 13 and a half inch kind of nose that a lot of long boards do. A lot of comp boards try to compensate for nose riding and surfing off the tail, so they have a really narrow tail, quite a big bulky sort of round nose to help with nose riding, but this actually has quite a pulled in nose, which you'd expect from a HIHP, which is the full high performance, but it still nose rides really well. Providing you lock your rail in, you can run to the nose, you can get a good three, four, five second, whatever you want, 10 second nose ride if you want. Um, this thing nose ride as good as any other board, but I do like the slightly pulled in nose because it's got a really good swing rate. So it's not heavy up the front, you can chuck this thing around. Um, if you're the type of guy that is um, it's like me, I'm sort of like mid 40s, um, I still surf a shortboard a fair bit, but I do love to ride the longboard in that as well. Um, this thing will surf like a shortboard. You can surf traditional on it if you want to, but this thing is geared up for high performance, full tilt, full down the line. Um, I like the low, low rail that it's got as well, it's got a super low rail almost like a bit of a pinch through there and a real hard edge all the way down through the bottom part of the board there like that. Hard edge starts from out there, around about up there and um, it is super responsive. You can, um, when you've got a nice fast pocket, you can sort of give, because the board's so light, it's got such a narrow rail, you can sort of give those double, double quick pumps down the line to build up a lot of speed. This board carries a lot of speed and because of the continual rocker, you can step back and really give it a big whip off the top if you want to. You can come down into the wave and a lot of like sort of long long boards that are flat. When you come down the wave as well, they can nose dive, but because it's got like a nice pulled in, nice rocker, with a little bit of adjustment, you can sort of bring it down around for a nice bottom turn straight back up again. It's a really good board, super fast. Um, it doesn't have a stupid amount of rocker. I've seen uh, some of the Firewire Pro models that are out there and they do have a crazy amount of banana in them. But uh, this is a little bit flat, you know, like flatter than some of those, like, you know, you get the TJ Pro by um, Firewire, you know, like the Timber Tech boards. Um, they have a crazy amount of rocker in them. This thing doesn't have a stupid rocker in it, but what it's got is a continuous rocker, and that is what I think the magic ingredient is on this board. Plus with the V through it, rather well, it's unreal. Um, double concave out through the fins. Um, like I said, you can ride it as a quad. Um, I haven't ridden it as a quad because um, uh, I, even though quads are fast, I prefer like the release that you get from a thruster. You know, thrusters sort of pivot, whereas quads sort of hold their arc. I think you need a bit of pivot with a long board, you know. Um, yeah, um, like I said, I've had this board for over two years now, from 2017 to now, 2000, end of 2019, and there is only just slight indentation there on the deck from my knee, from, uh, but pushing down for duck dive, I think. Yeah, but besides that, there's no, all the little round things that you get for fiberglass boards, they're not there. Um, I suppose I should go into also the flex. These things do flex, whereas the, um, the tough lights don't flex. And um, I guess a lot of people think that they're a, an epoxy board, um, like the whole reason I'm doing this review is because I get asked almost every surf that I take this thing out, someone asks me about the board. So they're not like an epoxy at all. They look like they're epoxy, but they're not epoxy. I think they do have, they have an EPS core like an epoxy, but that's, I think that's where it ends. And like I said, these things don't get affected by the wind. They surf like a fiberglass board, but they're light and strong, like, I guess, like an epoxy board. Um, they've got flex, like a fiberglass board. Um, they've got drive, it carries its speed. Um, it, um, it doesn't chatter like other board, like epoxy boards do. Um, it doesn't, if, you, if you're surfing a run out tide and you come into some dead water, it doesn't get bogged down like the old tough lights do. They just, they pretty much perform exactly like a fiberglass board. 
except they've got the strength and durability. So, I mean, I got mine from, uh, from got mine flown down from Cops Harbour. I live in South Australia. And um, yeah, this thing is, um, I was told on the phone that this thing's guaranteed to last half a lifetime. And if you are investing a couple of grand in a board, you know, if you're including fins plus the purchase price, you do want to get some longevity out of it. And honestly, it truly is like a one board quiver sort of thing. So um, I used to, I've, you know, like I said, I do compete in like local board rallies and state titles and things like that. And before I used to sort of question if I've got the right board or the wrong board, whereas this board here is, is I know, is the only board I need to chuck in the car and take down with me, providing the waves at anything over knee high. So these things will surf on shore one to two foot slot, and I've also taken it out to five foot plus, pumping offshore waves, and yeah, this thing performs. Like it's, it is a magic board. If you haven't surfed one, hire one, borrow one, and check it out. Like I said, I'm not paid to endorse this product in any way. It's just a just a review for the average average Joe who's thinking about buying one. You know, because if you're like me, you're a little bit sort of OCD when it comes to the purchase of boards. If you like to do a little, little re- bit of research, and the fact that you are shelling out a lot of money for something that you you have you're not too sure what it's like, I can say that you won't be sorry. I think there are other models like there's a new HI4. And I think he's got one called a diamond drive. You can also get a rounded square tail. This is the full HIHP round tail. And yeah, like I said, I was a bit apprehensive. Oh, maybe I should get the diamond drive because it's slightly bigger and it'll be able to handle your bread and butter everyday surf. But honestly, this thing can surf in one to two foot as, as good as it surfs in four to five foot, six foot. Um, like I said, I know you can surf mouths in big ways. I've taken them over to the mouth dives before and surf six to eight foot waves on a longboard. Not this board because I didn't own it then, but yeah, it is doable. And um, if you're looking for a board that you could travel with, um, that can take a few knocks. I've dropped this thing a couple of times and knocked it on things, and the coating or the, the, the PVC construction and the carbon in these things are tough. But um, like I said, I don't know if they're indestructible or not. I'm not willing to find that out. But um, as far as like looks wise goes, like this board is two and a half years old and it still looks like it's brand new so if this was a fiberglass board this would be starting to get a little bit yellow now um, this would have splits and dings and it would have a few pressures all around the deck but this board is still in the same condition I bought it two and a half years ago and still has the same stiffness and flex and it is really is game changer so honestly I don't think I'll ever be buying a fiberglass board again um, I'll probably stick to the Thunderbolt Tech you can get Thunderbolt in all different types of boards now. I think they make like nose riders now. Um, I remember Noosa, I went up to the uh, 2009 Noosa Longboard Festival and I saw Christian Watt there surfing a 10 foot black carbon wrap nose rider. And this thing was so light and whippy, even though it's a 10 foot log. And I was like, wow, carbon board, something in that. And then when they released these through the Thunderbolt tech, um, yeah, like I said, from the very, very first surf, I was blown away by how good it was, and um, I don't think I've really had a bad surf on it. So, yeah, that's my review. Hope you guys liked it. Um, yeah, drop a comment below if, if you did or if you didn't, that's fine. Yeah, so thanks for watching.